Hey team, welcome to the videos on the introduction to defibrillation. So firstly we're going to go through the life packs and then I'll be taking you through the AEDs that we have and what's expected or what, what you can find inside the AED component. If what we're about to cover isn't included in any of the pieces of equipment that you get when you sign it out, please let me know straight away because it should all be checked before being issued to you for your event. So Colbrow actually has four life packs available. These life packs will only be issued to you if you are working with a healthcare professional. The difference between the life packs and the AEDs that the, are available to all BLS medics is that obviously the life packs have screens on them so you can do cardiac monitoring as well as use it as a semi-automatic defibrillator or manual defibrillator. Whereas the AEDs that we stock don't have that monitoring capability. We own two 12 lead units and two three lead units. One of the three lead units is actually a five lead, so um, we'll discuss that very, very shortly, what the difference is. For those of you who are paramedic students, you should be familiar with the lead placements. This video is not gonna go through lead placement as you won't be expected to do that by yourself at an event. This is purely familiarization with the equipment so that you know how to turn it on, what to look for, and get it ready for the HCP that you're working with. So we'll start off between the differences with the units. So this is a three lead unit on your right and a 12 lead unit on your left. The way to tell the difference between them just by looking at them straight up is the 12 lead unit has an additional button at the bottom left corner, which simply says 12 lead. If the unit doesn't say that, it's not a 12 lead unit. Both the setups on both units are exactly the same and you'll find equipment at exactly the same locations for both units. So on the left hand side of the unit you have all your diagnostic equipment. So we'll go through the small one. You have all your diagnostic equipment on the left. So if you open the pouch up this is where you'll find your blood pressure cuff, your pulse oximeter and your ECG cardiac monitoring leads. On the right hand side of the unit is your pads and the, or your paddles. So if you open it up, you should already have one set of paddles connected, which is the plug. There should also be a spare set, a spare set and a paddle connected. And your patient preparation kit, which should be in every single AED, whether it's a life pack or the automatic defibrillators that I'll show you later on. The preparation kit includes a chucks wipe, a pair of shears, and a blunt razor to uh, trim down that additional hair that you may need to ensure good pad contact on a patient. So the idea of this video is to show you how to turn the unit on, ensure it does a self test before the start of every shift. So for those of you who are working at upcoming multi-day festivals such as Rainbow Serpent, Dragon Dreaming, Strawberry Fields, these checks need to be done at the start of every shift. The checks are done by our team before they leave the office, um, so they should be good to go before they issue to an event, but it's also up to you guys out in field to ensure that they continue working because things happen to equipment. It may get bumped or it could just stop working being an electrical piece of equipment and we need to make sure that it's good to go before we need to use it on the patient. There are two tests involved that we should be doing. One of these tests will be done at the start of every shift. The second test will be done before it leaves the office. So the first test that we do is known as the unit self-test. So to initiate the self-test, we press the on button located in the top right corner, labelled on, simply. That turns the unit on and we can see the details come up on the screen. You then want to press your options button, which is located under the alarms. And the button setup is exactly the same on both or on all four units, they don't change. Press options. Then using your scroll wheel, which is your left and right scrolls, we want to scroll down to use a test. To select that option, we simply press in on the wheel. This will now start a self-test of the unit, which should take approximately 30 seconds. So now we can see the strip of paper I was talking about that has printed out. So you tear that off, you sign it and initial it. 
which just says user test passed. Fold it up. Slip it in the top of the case so we can easily reference it later. So the other test that we need to do is what's known as a load test or a test dump. And that is done using this test load, which is located here at the office. These are highly expensive uh, and very fragile, so they won't actually be leaving the office to go to events with you. They will remain here. So it's a good idea to do this yourself if it hasn't been done before you take the DP with you, um, or you can do it on its return, but they will be done generally before you take the unit out. So as we can see, there are uh, prongs on this unit, and this test load is designed to attach to the life pack itself to perform a test load or a test dump. So what you want to do, what you want to do is it connects to the paddle section on the unit. Okay? It will only go one way. So if I try and connect it this way, it doesn't actually fit. So it's designed to be able to fit one way only, and that way is the black long piece of rectangle connected to the black triangle. That's the only way it will fit. So plug straight in. You then want to place that on the table. Now it is, it is safe to do. I can hold that load in my hand, um, but we are dealing with electricity and I just don't take any chances. So place that on the table. What we now want to do is we're going to use this defib in manual mode to initiate a charge to test into that and then get the printer to print it out to say that it has successfully delivered the charge. So I'm going to make sure the unit is in manual mode and I do that by just ensuring these lights up here are off. So if these lights are off, it means the unit is in manual mode. I'm going to use the energy select button to select 200 joules. So as we can see, the unit is capable of delivering anything from one joule or two joules right up to should be 360. So in manual mode, I can select any joulage setting that I'd like. These test loads are only designed to take 200 joules, no more. Obviously they can take less, but we use the maximum allowable test load. So 200 joules. Once the joulage setting is selected, we then press charge, which is directly below energy select. The unit will charge up to 200 joules. To deliver the shock, we want to press the flashing red shock button. That has now discharged 200 joules of electricity from the defib unit, LifeHack 12, into the test load. And we can see that the printer is printing out to tell me that that load has been successfully delivered. Once that, again, has been printing, we tear that off. We simone and initial that, just like last time, fold it up, and we leave it inside. So now we're going to go through how to use this unit in semi-automatic mode. So semi-automatic mode is probably the option that you'll be using if you're not with a healthcare professional, which as I said earlier, you should be using this unit only with a healthcare professional. But in the rare occasion that you do need to use this unit without a HCP, I'm going to show you how to use it on a patient. So you want to make sure that the advisory button is pressed in. So when you press advisory, that turns the unit into a semi-automatic defibrillator. So it will then analyse the heart rhythm and will advise whether a shock is advised or not advised. Um, it doesn't have a countdown like an AED does or a semi-automatic does. So you do need to be relying on your time awareness uh, when you're using a life pack model. The other thing to note is I mentioned earlier that it needs to be in manual mode to, to do a test, test dump. You'll notice that if I press the energy select button, that light turns off. So sometimes you may accidentally press energy select or um, you know, the, the machine's not working in semi-automatic mode. Um, just press advisory again. If I press, the more I press advisory, it just turns it on and off and alternates between the two modes. So just make sure that light's on. To analyse the patient's heart rhythm, you then want to press the analyse button. Now it's not going to actually do it Connect because I have electrons. nothing connected to the unit on this occasion, no patient and no paddles. But by pressing analyse, it's going to analyse the heart rhythm and tell me whether shock is advised or not advised. From there, when it's in advisory mode, it will automatically charge up which, as you saw before, connect electrodes. 
push analyze. So now somebody press analyze. Analyzing now. So I'm going to analyze. Scan clear. Now because there's no electrical activity. No shock advised. It's going to tell me no shock advised. Start CPR. Okay. So what I'm, do, what I'm going to do from here, you'll hear the alarm, I'm going to turn the alarm off, which is just done by pressing the alarms button. Obviously you wouldn't do that during a real CPR case, but for the purpose of training and testing, we can just turn the alarm off. What I'm going to do now is show you how to stop the machine from delivering a charge. So if it's in automatic mode, and it's not going to be con aware if the patient is conscious. So for conscious VT, we don't deliver a shock. The machine's still going to charge up. What you want to do, is when you charge it up, you'll note down here it says push select a knob to disarm. Okay, if the machine has charged and I don't want to deliver the shock, I simply press in on the selector wheel and that stops the machine from shocking without a shock being delivered. So if the patient's in conscious VT, we just press the selector wheel so that the machine does not deliver the shock. You also notice down here that you have a variety of other buttons available. So we have lead, size, NIBP, alarms, options and events. Now I'm going to cover these buttons off. So NIBP stands for non-invasive blood pressure. That refers to the diagnostic tools that we have on the opposite side of the unit. So as I mentioned earlier, we have our pulse oximeter, blood pressure cuff, and ECG monitoring leads. Blood pressure cuffs only come in adult sizes. We don't stock any child or bariatric size cuffs. So if we're working at an event where children are expected or um, bariatric patients, um, we won't actually have the capabilities of taking their vital signs um, via this device. However, we can still do it through the manual options. So when I press non-invasive blood pressure, that's actually going to start, start pumping this cuff up. Okay, this will take a blood pressure automatically. So this is great for any sort of any music festival where you can't get an auscultation um, of blood pressure. The machine will take it for you. To stop the unit, like I just did, press NIBP again and it will stop inflating the cuff. The reading will show up in the bottom left corner of the screen. The other thing to note is it has an event feature. So if you're using the life pack and we're doing CPR, I can simply press event and it's going to bring up a whole list of pre-programmed events that will then timestamp in my code summary. So I can then select what I've done. So for instance, we commenced CPR. I'm going to select that and it tells me that CPR was commenced at 10.04 and then timestamps that. You can then do that for a multitude of things. So go to second page, it has IV access, morphine, oxygen, uh, nitroglycerin. So then we're gonna, now gonna give GTN. So we're gonna give GTN, and that's time stamped it for me. So then when I go through to print a code summary, so after the patient has been discharged to ambulance care uh, or handed over, the ambulance may wanna take a copy of this to hospital with them. Um, also ultimately for our PCRs as well, we need to know what time we did what to keep track of the, the accurate event history. I'm simply going to press code summary in the bottom left corner of the unit. By pressing code summary, the machine is going to print out everything that we have done since the machine was turned on. It will also print out a summary or a, a copy of ECGs taken and electrical activity at various times before and after the shock. As we'll see coming out now. So before and post shock. So we're just gonna let that print out. Um, and this is what the ambulance would take or the doctors would take um, and they'd use this at hospital for best patient care possible. You may also need a copy of this if we were to go to coroners um, due to a negative outcome for the patient. I'm just going to stop that from printing. Now it is possible to get a copy of this after the unit has been turned off. Because as I said, it only prints what's happened since the unit's been turned on. 
if I was to accidentally turn the unit off and I'm thinking, oh no, I've now lost everything that we've done. Don't fret, it's been saved in the memory. So we turn the unit on. We're gonna go into options. So when you press options, there is an option for archives. Benefit of having computerized technology. So I'm gonna go into archives. It's telling me that I'm no longer gonna be able to monitor the patient. When I enter archive mode, and yes, I'm aware of that, we have no patient connected. Accessing patient records. We now want to print patient ID number. We need to change this number, and you do that by pressing the selector knob again. It brings up a list of every time this machine has been turned on. Okay, we want to look for the last time that it was turned on. So it's 9th of October, 9.50. And that's the one we want to go into. So you go into that, scroll up, and click on print. When I do that, the machine will then print out the user summary, or the code summary, from that particular patient and the records that we did. The last thing we need to cover on the LifePack 12 is how to change the roll of paper. So you may find that the paper runs out if you have a patient. Um, to change the paper, it's very, very simple. These printers, uh, on three of the units, we have a horizontal printer, and um, on the fourth unit, you have a printer that runs top to bottom, so it will print vertical. These printers, uh, they are in essence all the same. So you simply open the flap, and the roll of paper sits in here. So there's no ribbon to change, there's no um, feeding through rollers. So if you needed to change the roll of paper because it was low, We'll simply open a new roll, ensuring that the grid paper, it will grade its grid facing upwards. So you're not, not going to put it in that way. I want to ensure that the spool is facing up. I'm then going to place it into the holder between the two bumps that you can see, and that's simply what holds the roll of paper. So I place it in there. Make sure I have enough tail at out the, the trap door, out the printer door, close it, lock it by ensuring this slap is locked into position and the printer is good to go. So now if I press print, I just do a very quick print to make sure it's going to roll correctly and it's, it's all good to go. So the thing to note about these LifePak 12 is they are very difficult to break, guys. So all I can suggest is when you have them on an event, have a play with them, speak with your HCP, get them to show you how to use it. If myself or somebody else from the management team is on site, get them to show you how to use it. The best way to become familiar with the equipment is to have a play around and um, test on each other and see how you go.